Hello everybody. Um, fiber optics. What I have here is a 20 meter roll of um, free core side glowing fiber optic uh, fiber. Uh, I don't know if you can make this out, but there's like a plastic, a clear plastic sleeve inside. There's three individual fiber optic strands. And it's used for decorative purposes. I'm sure you could use it for data transmission, but it probably wouldn't be very effective because the whole point of fiber optic for uh, data transmission is that it doesn't lose any light. <clears throat> it decides you've got total internal reflections or whatever you put in here comes out the other end. And the only issue holding it back is the fact that light fades over time. But um, yeah, but this is specialist fiber optic uh, stuff designed for decorative purposes. So the whole idea is that when you light it up, it glows on the side, so you get light leakage, and you can build build stuff with. Now, the plan I have is to take this piece of wood here, with a pine board, stuff an old shelf, and uh, use this to spell out my daughter's name. Easier said than done. So, um, that's the plan. Now, the first thing is I have to make sure it all works and put it all together. Now, uh, I'm going to use RGB LEDs, but I'm not actually going to let change the colours because. Uh, being for a little girl, it's going to be pink. And I buy these LEDs off eBay and they're, I think I paid like six euros, six dollars for 200 of them. They're really cheap and uh, they're virtually disposable. So if I can get that camera to focus in. There we go. So you know, this is four legs on the LED, a uh, long one, two almost as long and a short one. And there's a little diagram that shows you where that works uh, that I made. The long one is positive, so you put that to the positive side of your battery. And B, uh, the shortest one is blue, and, the, and the, the ones either side of the longest one are green and red. And you simply vary the output to, ch to vary the colour. Simple as that. So if you wanted to be able to dynamically change the colour, you'd put a potentiometer on the BG, the blue, green and red output legs, or do it electronically using an Arduino or whatever, but <clears throat> using perhaps pulse word, uh, pulse word modulation or something like that. But anyway, that's the that's where the legs connect up. Simple enough. So for testing purposes, I tend to use these little button cells. You can connect them. Oh, if I can get little fingernails, you can. Hmm, I shouldn't bite my nails. You can connect these directly up to the LEDs without damaging them. There's not enough current. They buy them for a euro for eight. So I buy loads of them. They're very handy to have. And what I want is just to give us a quick test. And that's with all the LED, uh, all the legs connected, and it comes out as a kind of a greeny red. So they're they're cheap LEDs. They're not really. You know, you're not going to get a pure white light out of them. I don't want the green leg, so I'm going to get rid of, bend that one back. And that should give me the blue and the red, which gives me a kind of a pink. It doesn't really show up on the camera, but it's kind of a purpley red more than a pink. But it'll do the job for this. Um, I'm actually going to run this off a 9 volt battery uh, when I actually deploy it for, so that it'll be a lot more brighter. <clears throat> now for attaching up to the, to the, to the LEDs, you need to make sure the light's going in correctly. I'm actually going to use this stuff here. This is actually um, clear silicone food tubing, which I found in a recycling centre in Dublin. It's a, an artistic recycling centre where you can uh, uh, pay a membership fee and just go and help yourself. So they've got stuff like stuff, you know, factories have got left over and old brochures and bits of carpet and stuff that clothing factories have left over. It's a fantastic place. I'll put the name up because I've completely forgotten. It's a charity and it's quite a good little set setup. And these LEDs do actually kind of go in here directly. Well, they don't go in directly. You can force them in, but I tend to help them along using the old uh, blowtorch here. Um, <clears throat> now you don't actually want to burn it. I'm not going to do this under the camera because it will damage the camera. But you kind of just want to do that, just to soften it up. You don't want it to burn, you don't want it to smoke. You just want to warm it up a bit. So it makes it easier to sort of push in and into the tube. And there you can see. 
when the camera focuses. I'm not really happy with this camera at all. Let's see if I can force it to focus. There you go. So that's how it works. So like I said, I don't want the green leg. So I'm going to actually uh, bend that out of the way. Where's the short leg? Because once you've played around with it for a bit, it goes off. You sort of lose the, the flow. And that should be the yet yeah, the kind of pinkishness. Now, um, <clears throat> so I'm just going to cut this off a bit. Where did I put my scissors? There we go. So you need about so oh, less about an inch, two centimeters of tubing. And on the actual fiber optic itself, now it depends on what kind of fiber optic you have. Sometimes you might actually have solid you know, f f strands like the stuff inside. Or in this case, it's like a, a mix. Now, getting a good connection is kind of, it is a bit of a challenge. You want these to sort of touch the top of the LED, not so the light goes straight into them, but not necessarily uh, to the side, because then the light won't go in. I'm just going to actually trim these down a bit. Let's see if this works. Getting it because this is such a snug fit, getting it in might be a bit of a challenge because there's no air getting out. Actually, you know, so that works perfectly. Ah, lovely. Actually, you know, so I'm pushing it in, and the strands are coming through. I might actually need to tweak the length of this a bit. Let's give this a quick try anyway and see how it looks. So it doesn't really show up in daylight. I should have, this would be a better video to do at night time. Um, what I will do is, if you do this, is I would recommend putting a bit of black insulation tape around it to hold it. So that you're sort of capturing more of the light. I know it doesn't really work that way, but you know, the more you keep, the better. Um... And like I say, you can't really see it. Maybe you can. But there is a little bit of red light coming out the other side. So what I'm going to do is actually, when I sort of put this on, I'm probably going to, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to fix it down. I'm tempted to use staples, but I don't want to kink this because fiber optics can actually go around corners, but they don't like to be kinked. Kinking it wrecks it. So anyway, I'm just going to, so what we'll probably do is cut it to size and put an LED in both ends. How I'm going to do that is, I've got my prototype here, um, on the board, using an 9-volt battery. I will uh, pull, switch it on, I'll tell you all about it. Quite simple really, uh, I did use an online calculator to work out the values of resistor. So there's one 15 ohm resistor here, feeding in, and I've got the two, the green and the, sorry, the red and the blue leg coming out of negative, feeding into the next one in series. And I might actually have to add an extra one for the dot of the eye. I'm not quite sure how to do that, so I might actually drill a hole through the board and put an LED through, but I'll see how it goes. But that's basically the circuit I'm going to use. It's going to be really quite simple, and um, it's going to be really quite as simple as that. So anyway, um, I'm going to start on drilling this board in and figuring out a way to attach the fiber optic, and I'll be back soon. Take care. Cheerio. And here we are. Um, as you can tell, arts and crafts are not my strong point. <laughs> it doesn't really look like it says juicy. It just kind of look, looks a bit like random spaghetti landed on a piece of wood. But there you go, J-O-S-I-E. In the end, I actually used the staple gun on these uh, little U-shaped staples, which um, did the job because they don't go in the full way and they left enough room at the top for me to slide the, fi the fiber optic through. Um, on the back it's very crude but then again it's just the first pro version prototype. Uh, I was going to use this plastic food tubing but actually in the end I actually wondered what if I just wrap it with black insulation tape and that works pretty well actually. Um, unfortunately the result isn't that impressive now if I switch it on it was a little bit pink at the edges 
Uh, there is a very obvious, obvious, noticeable tailing off of light as you go along. It still glows in the middle. You can't really see it here. I will come back in a few hours when it's dark and show it when we do a proper demonstration. Uh, yeah, so I think I need to to make this work. I need to ramp up the amount of light I'm putting into it. Um, now, commercial LED, sorry, commercial fiber optic injectors that are used for uh, uh, visual purposes as opposed to data, no, for sorry, for decorative purposes as opposed to data purposes, are quite powerful. They generally use you no know, halogen lamps and um, the like, and 100, 150 watts would be considered fairly you no know, normal sort of power it puts. You no. Know, uh, a couple of L RGB LEDs running off a 9 volt battery is considerably less than that. So, uh, but like I say, I'll see what it looks like in the dark. Um, and of course, if it works nicely, I'll come back and redo all this because this is just very crude. I'll probably put it onto a circuit board and put a switch on. But there you go. Um, I'll be back in the dark. Hold on. Almost coming now. Boom. So, uh, here we are in the dark with um well the lights are on i'll turn it on doesn't look too bad switch the light off give the camera a few seconds to adjust oh one more light so actually in the dark it looks okay um obviously around here and here there is a very obvious brightening and the light tails off as you get to the middle you know, uh, it's proved a concept. Um, I'm probably going to dismantle this and rebuild it um, to make it look a bit better because it's a bit abstract. That's what you get when you don't uh, plan ahead. But you know, I kind of like that. And as a, as a night light for a bedroom, it's pretty nice. And I'd probably uh, set it up to work with a mains adapter instead of a 9 volt battery. Well, I'm at it. I just want to show you something. This, um, I've got the roll of. The role of a uh, fiber optics here. What's well, there's like probably another 18 meters, and a very bright 200 milliwatt laser. Uh, this uh, I use to annoy the local kids. He gets. Oh, I take the dog out for a walk, and there's some local kids who think they're all very fancy and clever because they got a five milliwatt laser, little sort of cheapo office-based, but sort of typical laser pointer you get for office presentations and the like. And then there's me with my 200 milliwatt one, which I got off the internet. And if you just see that, that's quite impressive, actually, isn't it? So that's pretty cool. I kind of like that. Move it around a bit. Ooh, I like that. So, um, I can't really use a laser. For that, but you know, I think it goes to show a brighter LED is what you need. So, um, you know, it's it's a first attempt, but it works. So, I think my next thing is probably just going to rebuild this one, make it proper, probably root the edges a bit to make you know, chamfer them, make it look a bit nicer. Uh, put in a borrow connector so I can connect it up to a nine volt main supply, and then uh, for version two, get, I'll try and source some more powerful LEDs and a bigger bit of wood. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed it. Cheers, take care. Bye-bye.